Well, it was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Crowds turned up all over central Indiana for just one specific moment, seeing the eclipse in totality for three minutes and 49 seconds. People from around the state and around the country marveled at the wonder of the moon completely covering the sun. Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Sanchez. We've been out here at IMS all day long covering this monumental moment, and it certainly was. About 50,000 people we're here today just to take this in as we take a live look, or a look rather, I should say, at some time-lapse video. It was a good day. It was an eventful day here. We had a good time, a lot of people here, uh, but IMS wasn't the only place that had this event. We have crews spread out all across central Indiana, uh, from Bloomington to Fishers to White River State Park, including another crew here at IMS. Cody Fisher joining us now uh, with more on this event. Cody. Yeah, Phil, everybody here that was around the pagoda, the 50,000 people that were here at IMS have now left. The only thing that's left are signs like these that are kind of the remnants of the solar eclipse day. But let's actually show you the video from our perspective of myself, TJ and Nicole, our field producer, as the moment of totality hit. We were on the front stretch, just a stone's throw away from the yard of bricks. And as you can see, the emotions of people as totality hit. They were able to take off their solar eclipse glasses and they were able to view the full total solar eclipse, see the corona around the sun, the emotions wash over people. Uh, there's a video posted on my Facebook. You can see the emotions of a little a child couldn't be more than five or six years old, just jumping up and down, overjoyed uh, by the moment. And we spoke with a woman about what that moment meant to her. It is weird in an absolutely phenomenally good way. So when you're when you're standing there and it happens, like it's hard to put into words, but you feel small. And at the same time, you know, you're just like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I'm so happy to see it. And the words of that woman that we spoke with ring true, at least for me as well, is it get the total solar eclipse puts you in the scale of the cosmos where you feel small, but at the same time you feel important as well, being surrounded by those thousands and thousands of people here on the front stretch at IMS. Reporting live, Cody Fisher, Wish TV, IT Mate. Yeah, it was very cool, Cody. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thousands of people that were here during the event, uh, but now, as Cody mentioned, a lot of them are gone, and I'm assuming that's the case at White River State Park as well. Danielle Zakowski joining us now with more on that aspect. Danielle, what's it looking like out there? Is the crowd thinning out? Definitely thinning out, but definitely not empty yet. We still have a handful of people here walking on the canal, enjoying the lawn. I mean, it is still a state park and it's a beautiful day, so people are still here enjoying nature. But earlier, as we all know, they were all enjoying that beautiful once in a lifetime experience of that total solar eclipse. And some of the people I talked to say they came here because it was beautiful to witness it with the camaraderie of everyone else who chose White River. The total solar eclipse brought people from across the country to Indianapolis to see this once in a lifetime experience. It was amazing. There was like maybe about 20 seconds before totality, people started counting down in the crowd. And all of a sudden when you hit zero and you could take off your glasses, you saw this like complete blackout of the sun and like this ring of light around it. It was pretty amazing. One Tennessee woman tells News 8 she had plans to go to Texas, but the bad weather forecast brought her to Indianapolis. I saw the eclipse in Southern Illinois in 2017, and it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. That was, I was on top of a boulder, this time with all the group. And I've also, I also saw the annular eclipse in San Antonio with the Ring of Fire. So I am an eclipse junkie. And there was State Park had some unique spots to watch the eclipse, including on a boat from the White River itself. To not only witness history, um, but to be a part of it and to help others be a part of it. And that is something I'm going to take away for the rest of my life. And just being able to spread that community camaraderie uh, to people. Crowds at the park really took in the wonder of the eclipse and said it was something indescribable. 
The eclipse was one of the most amazing things I've ever gotten to see. And I agree with the people I spoke to who say, if you have never seen a solar eclipse in real life, that's something you should try to do. I'm Danielle Zolkowski for Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook for updates. All right, Danielle, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so we, as we mentioned, crews all across the area. Adam Pinsker joins us now live from Bloomington. Adam, pretty cool down there too, huh? It was absolutely amazing, Phil. It really was quite the experience like everyone else has been talking about here on the show. Um, it was total totality here for three and a half, four minutes, but it just seemed like we lost track of time during that period. The temperature dropped. The stadium got dark. If we go to some video that we cut earlier, you may see some shots of the stands here at Memorial Stadium on IU's campus where it felt like dusk. It certainly did. And having not, not having the stadium lights on and not uh, seeing any kind of light pollution from the town also helped out. Inside Memorial Stadium, we had quite the show. William Shatner of Star Trek fame headlined this event that was put on by IU. They had been planning this for about six years. We also heard a great speech from Mae Jemison. She was the first African-American woman to be in space, and she was very inspirational in her speech. And uh, we also talked to someone from Terre Haute who made the short drive over here to experience this event. This was my first like total solar eclipse since 2017, so it was just, it was really exciting to see because I haven't seen it since my sophomore year of high school. Uh, you says they had about 10,000 people here in the Memorial Stadium when we hit totality. It was quite the event. It was a lot of fun. And if you want to relive it, just go to our website. We have a beautiful photo gallery that our web team has put up with pictures from all over the region today. I'm live in Bloomington. Adam Pinsker, Wish TV, wishtv.com. And follow us on Facebook for updates. Adam, thank you. Yeah, to Adam's point, we have uh, pictures on wishtv.com. We've been covering this from all across the area, as you very well know. If you've been with us throughout the afternoon, from here at IMS to, to Bloomington, where Adam was, to... Um, the, uh, the White River State Park where Danielle was, but we have a different perspective to show you right now. This is, I think, pretty cool. We'll put it up on your screen. This is News 8's Kat Sandoval experiencing today's cosmic endeavor at 38,000 feet amongst the clouds. She boarded a plane in Houston, flew here to Indianapolis, and had the unique opportunity to see the total solar eclipse from the sky with other passengers. This was amazing for me, but I'm hoping this was like a, a lifetime memory for my son. He'll, he'll be able to tell his kids, hey, Grandma pulled me out of school, woke me up super early, dragged me to the airport, and he got to see the eclipse from 30,000 feet. Yeah, pretty neat. Uh, you can see Kat's full story tonight at 10 o'clock right here on Wish TV and wishtv.com. All right, so uh, here we are, 6 o'clock hour on this Monday, and the big story right now, Ryan, is the traffic. Mm -hmm. I know the last time we talked, the roads were pretty busy. Is that still the case? It's still very much the case on the northwest side. We're starting to unwind things down near downtown in the Speedway. I'll show you that in a second. Accident off the interstate near Keystone Avenue, heading southbound, it's pretty close to downtown, but doesn't appear to be too far of a backup. You'll note near Speedway, looking a little bit better, but as you head north and west, westbound 74 and then northbound 65, still very much of a slow go. So we continue to unwind things. Here's a look at 65, near State Road 32, which is in Lebanon. You can see the backup we have there. Cars are moving. Good thing is we don't have any new accidents to report on the interstate. So things continue to unwind, even though it's a very slow go on the northwest side, stretching from Whitestown all the way to up to Lafayette, nearly a 30 minute delay in stop and go traffic. So we're continuing to unwind that. And also in southern Indiana, as you're taking 65 southbound through Seymour, down through Austin, a bit of a backup there, but also seems to be improving. Back to you, Phil.